Well, good morning, everybody. To get us started today, I wanted to show you the last 72 hours of total accumulated precipitation through about 4 a.m. this morning. It just kind of highlights the origins of this system and how deep it is and how abundant the amount of moisture will be in this system. Because you can see here that through parts of the west into California, there were some places here that had up to almost five to six inches of liquid equivalent in that snow there. And it's been something I've been focusing a lot on. In fact, in today's uh, written email report, we again showcase what the Western United States snowpack looks like so far. And then begin to ask, how does a, a fading La Nina impact what that'll look like throughout the rest of the season? We do not want a repeat of last year for California, which again was very dry from uh, January through March. We did watch as the system emerged on the plain storms came out into parts of Western Kansas. This is an area that has been incredibly dry. Uh, some of these storms did put down some locally heavy rain, but you can see the coverage was quite terrible. Through early this morning, we're watching where the main line of storms is currently sitting, and we're going to watch it progress forward. But before I get into that and show you the new snowfall totals from the new models, I just want to point out that uh, the snowpack, this was a great tweet put out by the National Weather Service at Sacramento. You know, they showed that some places here, especially as you got over toward Tahoe, uh, almost six feet of snow. I mean, it's just great to see this early season snowpack. It'll be critical to the reservoir levels later in this um, uh, later this year. Now, as I said, the storms this morning, let's take a look at some lightning data here. Uh, we're moving right across parts of Kansas, central Kansas, down to central Oklahoma and into Texas. There's a little bit of lightning here over in Missouri as well. And these stor uh, storms later on today are, have increased the risk of very strong storms uh, right down here in the lower Mississippi River Valley. And then tomorrow and then the next day on Thursday as you get far into the southeast. That's, again, the speed of this system. It's very, very slow because it's cut off from the main jet stream. And there's more meridional flow, north-south versus uh, east to west. But just to show you the wind field today, this is impressive. It is a very large wind field. This is why there are blizzard warnings out for large sections of the western and northern plains. You can actually see the two main fronts. So here is the actual cold front on the backside. This is where the dry line and the upper level front are sitting. You have your warm conveyor belt that goes out ahead of it. That's what's delivering all the moisture and the cold coming in on the backside here. This is a classic setup for a big cyclone that's about to occlude over the next probably 48 to 60 hours as it moves toward the northeast. And uh, I sometimes when I see this stuff, I, I wish I was still teaching so that I could uh, show my new students exactly kind of what the atmosphere is capable of doing here. But it's these strong winds that have issued uh, the blizzard warnings. And I'm not quite sure, let me see if I can get an update of this, uh, why the all hazards weather map that I produce is missing these particular areas. But trust me, there is a blizzard warning in this area and winter storm warnings around the Red River Valley of the north. So uh, just a little bit of a data feed problem this morning. This is severe thunderstorm watch down here, or excuse me, tornado watch down here, but strong winds, strong synoptic scale winds around this. There's an ice storm warning tucked in here and winter storm watches out for parts of Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. I'll show you more about that in a second. Where the heaviest rains will likely be will be throughout Louisiana and southern Mississippi as the tail end of this front kind of sits over this area delivering quite a bit of very heavy rainfall. And that's going to be the area we watch out later today for the risk of strong to severe storms. Storm Prediction Center did increase the area over which it has its enhanced risk to now include eastern Texas all the way to this section of Mississippi. And as you saw in the lightning data, don't be surprised if you're in Illinois, maybe even farther north than that, uh, to see... Uh, and here, uh, see some lightning and hear some thunder today as this main front goes through. Now, tomorrow, the new SPC update, they've now increased a large area here uh, with uh, enhanced risk for severe storms on the 14th. And then we'll go out there and look at the 15th. It's going to get down into parts of Florida. So I want to go take a look at the high-res models to kind of get the uh, idea on the timing of this. So we're going to pick up several hours when I'm recording this morning. I'll start this at 8 a.m. when a lot of you will be reading this. And uh, this is where we expect the frontal squall line to be at that point and very heavy snow on the backside of this. Again, we'll take a look at the snowfall totals in a second. Through the middle of the day, the rain moves through parts of Iowa, Missouri, into Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. And again, that's where we're going to watch late tonight for there to be embedded very strong storms in this particular region. While the snow curls around on the backside of this, possibly reaching western Kansas, which would be great. That's just more moisture to pull into this area. But it's a slow mover. So the front slides through Illinois late tonight goes over into parts of Indiana uh, by early tomorrow morning. And you can see that it's going to take that whole time for the front to just move a couple hundred miles here. It's a very slow mover. And that's where we have the risk of extremely heavy uh, rain down south. Now getting out here to Wednesday, this is Wednesday afternoon and evening. We'll play this all the way out to early Thursday morning. The upper level low has barely moved during that time. And as a result, just a lot of widespread snow under very strong winds around the northern side of this. So this is a multi-day event that's going to be adding up quite a bit of snow. 
Okay, so uh, let's look at a couple of different sources here for the snowfall today. The first one I'm going to show you for the upper Midwest and northern plains is the um, National Digital Forecast Database forecast here of snowfall through uh, Thursday night. And again, what you see is there's going to be a corridor, according to the National Weather Service, right in through here that could get over 20 inches of snow, but widespread, very heavy snowfall amounts. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a little bit of model comparison here. This is the NDFD data. If we flip this over to the European data, you can see that the European model is more aggressive on those snowfall totals, which sometimes it can be. Uh, remember, uh, base, both of these maps are based off of a 10 to 1 snow ratio, but the National Weather Service isn't calling, calling for such deep snowfall amounts, for example, in this part of Minnesota compared to otherwise. Still going to be plenty of snow, but just not as deep. But this is really honing in on some very heavy snowfall in this area. Uh, now, later in the week, this system is going to be over in New England. And so let's go look there to see what the expected snowfall is. Because we'll have both the synoptic scale low pressure system delivering snow and then ice into Pennsylvania, which, I mean, if you see some of these totals here, it, deep in the interior of, um, you know, 12 to 18 inches, it's, it's a pretty high probability event that, that we're going to see that much here. But remember, there will be some lake effect snow that follows this. Uh, as this goes through. Uh, why don't we do one more thing before we switch off of this. I'm going to go to the European Ensemble and I'd like to show you this for the whole of the United States and I want to show you the probabilities. So this is the probability of getting at least three inches of snow. I don't know, let's take it out there. Ten days, that's good. This is the probability of getting three inches. Here is six inches of snow. So you're going to see, there we go, and here is 12 inches of snow. Now that really hones in on who's getting the heavy, heavy amounts. We can keep going. Here's the probability of 18. So right in these areas and parts of interior New York, some lake effect being added to there. Why not? Let's go all the way up to two feet. So a couple of areas might possibly see um, some very heavy snowfall. I mentioned the ice. I want to show you the latest WPC forecast for the probability of getting at least a tenth of an inch of ice. Again, we were watching out for that coming out of Iowa into South Dakota, Minnesota, but northern Wisconsin, uh, right here in lower Michigan, and then here. This is the area that will likely see the National Weather Service flip that winter storm watch over to an ice storm uh, warning, given the latest forecasts have been so consistent with this. Total precip out of this system remains very high. And in that snow, as I talked about in the in-depth report, there is up to two inches of liquid in that when it melts. So this is going to be critical right in through this area on um, snow melt later in the season for putting moisture back into the soil. Um, I, I'm, I'm very glad that this system is happening. It's very disruptive, but it's going to be useful in the long run. Heaviest rains are down here from Louisiana through the Tennessee Valley. Let's keep a close eye on how heavy the precip is going to be down there. Now, if you notice, the west is going to be drier over much of the next 10 days. Not completely dry, but just drier than normal. And a lot of that has to do with how the jet stream pattern leaving Japan is breaking up into a highly amplified ridge that's going to move into Alaska and over the Arctic. And so it just it stopped the good flow out of the Pacific Northwest. Um, I do believe that this is going to pick back up again quite soon. But uh, as it stands, that's going to be an area that's going to see possibly a drier than normal finish to the end of this year. I think January is going to return better flow to that area. And I put that in the long range video last night, but uh, I still see this being the, the likely scenario going to finish this year. Okay, so let's go watch all of this real quick. This is from today's uh, Zero Z European model. So here comes the system out. We've already seen this in the high res NAM main frontal boundary by the time we get out there to early in the morning. Let's put out there 6 a.m. It's now pushing into the Carolinas, ripping through parts of Florida. There's the ice risk that we have in Pennsylvania, but still very heavy snow on the northern side of this on Thursday morning, really hitting much of Wisconsin. Now, this low will slowly move east by the time we get into Friday morning, Friday afternoon and evening. And you can see the transition here into snow, but a lot of scattered snowfall uh, on the back side of this as the upper level just fails to move. If you watched last night's video, we did talk about this second system that's possibly coming out of Texas next uh, Monday into Tuesday. And the latest model run is suggesting that that will happen. So this could be another day about a week from now, or no, excuse me, not a week from now, but ne next Monday uh, into Tuesday that we see some stronger storms over parts of the south and mid-south and possibly even some snow coming into parts of the Midwest here. There's a weak system coming into the Northwest, but not too much really going on here given the weaker jet stream flow across the West. Now, I went ahead and played this all the way out to day 10, and I wanted to show you why I'm doing this. We do not trust this, of course, but if you start to see the models picking up on the chance for snow and ice this far south, it tells you that there is some brutally cold air that will be following this system. And the model's been quite consistent with that. 
This is the day five through 10 temperature anomaly map, just the updated one I showed last night. Uh, and again, it's very consistent on the duration and depth of this cold air. We will finish 2022, most of the United States, in, un, under very cold conditions, possibly 20 to 30 degrees colder than normal. Why is it more mild in California? Well, the jet stream flow is, is forecast to do something a bit more like this. Now, if we end up developing deeper troughs of low pressure here, which is what the models are suggesting around Christmas and beyond, this is kind of a signal for a lot of us. I mean, see, see the big block there? The flow is highly amplified. I mean, whenever I see this, it just makes me anxious about what could be coming out of the Gulf, what could be coming out of, you know, the Tennessee Valley. What does this mean for East Coast storm systems? And I don't know if the models have fully grasped what that's going to look like for week two. Um, there's quite a bit of uncertainty, but I just want to tell you to keep a close eye to finish the year uh, on the East Coast <clears throat> uh, for potentially large systems while the midsection of the country goes over uh, very, very cold. Lastly, I just want to bring up to speed on uh, the newest updates out of South America. We talked in the in-depth report about um, just the drought, ongoing drought there. Today's Zero Z model runs suggest, again, better rains for most of Brazil's growing areas. Just a little drier, Mato Grosso do Sol over toward Paraná, but um, this area is still going to be picking up decent moisture, even though it's showing up drier. The risk is in Rio Grande do Sol, parts of Paraguay, and then central Argentina, right in through here, or north central Argentina, where we just continue to see the models double down on on how dry things are. So that's going to continue to be a problem as we go forward. Uh, but I uh, look forward to talking again tomorrow morning. I'm off to Indiana now for some CCA training. I get to speak over there this morning. So I'll talk to you all again soon. Thanks.